Hey guys, Backyard Scientist here. Um, first thing first, you probably see my arm is all scraped up. No, I didn't get in some crazy industrial accident. I actually got into a fight. A fight, yeah. <laughs> you should see the other guy. The other guy, yeah. I hit a mailbox. I hit a mailbox on my bike. Um, this video is sponsored by Helmets. No. Actually, actually, this, bot, this video is sponsored by KiwiCo. Today we're gonna to be trying a project that I've wanted to do forever. So right here, I've got a big bucket full of metal BBs, a bunch of tiny little metal BBs. And I was always curious, what happened if you took a welder or a car battery and melted the BBs together? Could you melt them together so they look like a lightning bolt or a Tesla coil frozen in time? That would be really cool. Speaking of lightning bolts, they cause a naturally occurring phenomenon just like this called fulgurites. Except when they strike sand, they create a molten tunnel of sand right where the lightning bolt strikes on the beach. And they're really rare and hard to find and they're pretty fragile. So really quickly, let's try making our own fulgurites with our own high voltage transformer. Notice this beautiful Zen garden that Sandra made. A cool thing about sand is it's not conductive, but when it heats up, it is conductive. So it allows me to stretch this out really far. Whoops. <laughs> Ooh, it's hot. Looks like the electricity is just growing right off the carbon rod like that. That's pretty cool. It's like some sort of demon claw. <laughs> oh, it's hot. Hot, hot, hot. Okay, we're gonna let that cool down for a minute. <laughs> I'm like trying to hold it together. All right, let's see if we can clean these up a bit. That's cool. They're red from the copper. Cause look at these are super red. And then these are clear. And this is because I used the thick copper wire and then these are red because I think I used the thin wire and it was melting. I noticed as I was doing it, the wire kept getting shorter. It's like from the molten copper mixed with the glass. So these were kind of cool. These little sand fulgurites were pretty cool. But what I'm really trying to do here is I bought 50 pounds of these shot blasting steel beads. They're like little BBs, basically. Little tiny steel balls that you would use to uh, like clean off metal or something after it was cast or clean bricks or paint or something like that, I don't know. The idea here is that I can use my welder and use the like really high current in the welder to fuse these steel balls together and get some really cool long Lichtenberg figures in like 3D electricity shapes out of these. So let's try and see what happens. If you're curious about how I set all of this up, so I have the welder here and I've set it onto DC TIG welding, but I have the stick welding electrode holder. So what I'm going to be doing is just controlling the power like this. So basically I can control the power with my foot to decide how much energy to put into this thing. Otherwise, if it was on stick welding, as soon as I touched it, it would just be full power immediately. Maybe I should wear this. I like having retinas. All right, let's see. I put one here, then one here. Oh, you can kind of see it. Can you see it? Kind of. Could you see like the, the path that it was taking? You could kind of see right through the metal BBs, like seeing if this is cool. Oh, wow, that's hot. I need a science fork. <laughs> I'm, I'm, it's not a joke. These are actually science forks because Sandra doesn't let me use the nice forks for science experiments anymore. Not after the incident. <laughs> The well, multiple yeah, let's. Who am I kidding? Everything's been an inc incident. Look at that. Oh, cool. Yeah, look at that. It's like a little, you know, electric Lichtenberg figure. So I noticed it's all taking the same path back, you know? Yikes. Oh, see, that was a weird path that it took. I thought it would take the closer path back. All right, so these came out super cool. Check that out. They look really cool, but they're also two-dimensional. Ah! So yeah, they're a little bit fragile and two-dimensional, but I've got an idea and I think I can fix both of those problems. So my first idea was instead of pouring all the metal BBs into a shallow pan, we're going to be using a tall flower pot. That way we can get cooler, more natural looking shapes. And I also built this platform right here that we can set this on. And if you notice under the flower pot, I have this little tube sticking up right here. And this is connected to argon gas. The other problem that we're having is these things are kind of fragile. And I think it's because the steel BBs aren't really getting hot enough to melt together. They're kind of just getting really hot and fusing together, but they're not really fully melting together. Fortunately, I have this. 
This is 33 pounds of silicon bronze wire. The plan here is to chop up the silicon bronze wire, mix it in with the steel BBs, and it'll act like the glue holding the steel together and hopefully it'll make everything a lot stronger. Let me show you how I cannibalized my table saw to chop up some wire. So basically what I have here is a roll of silicon bronze welding wire, this wire feeder device, and it comes out right here. Let me show you how it works. Hopefully this doesn't hit the glass so we won't die. Okay, ready to go. So now you get these nice little slivers of wire that are pretty much exactly the same size as the steel BBs. So as I was experimenting with this, trying to get it to work, I was running into a problem. A normal saw blade has a lot of little blades on it to make a really smooth cut. The problem was it was just shaving the tiniest little bits of, so I bought these blades, which are made for something called a dado or dado or daddy saw. I don't know what it's called, but they're only two blades, so that means even at full speed, this is still going around, and so that means that this wire has more time to advance before this chops it off. So I get nice big bits of wire instead of tiny little slivers of wire. Everything works fine, but by my calculations, this wire feeder can only feed 12 meters per minute, and this roll has a lot of meters on it. So it'll basically take eight hours to get rid of that. So like I said, this thing is going to take eight hours to chew through all of this wire. So let me take the next eight hours to tell you about KiwiCo. You've heard me talk about KiwiCo before. KiwiCo is defining the future of play by making it engaging, enriching, and seriously fun. They create super cool projects and toys designed to expose kids to the concepts of STEAM and make great tools for learning at home. Each monthly crate is designed by experts and tested by kids and teaches a new theme through hands-on learning and fun. KiwiCo offers eight subscription lines, each catering to different age groups and topics. Each box comes with all the supplies needed for that month's project, which means no extra runs to the store. KiwiCo also has a store that allows you the flexibility of purchasing individual projects or even value packs that cater to different ages and topics with no subscription needed. Use my code BACKYARD for 20% off everything on the site, both subscription boxes and in the store. See the links in the description down below. All right, so this thing has been running for a long time. So let's check out what we've got. Oh, would you look at that, gold. All that silicon bronze. That actually worked out really good. Well, there's some bits of sawdust and aluminum in there still. All right, so let's see how much of everything we have. Steel BBs, 45.7 pounds. 27.2. So that's about 50%. I think that'll be a good ratio. So two bits of steel for every one bit. It'll be, you get the idea. You know what I'm talking about, guys. All right, I got all the steel and copper mixed up nicely. So we'll just turn on the gas and let's do this. I think it's working. Whoa, now that is hot. I'm gonna let this cool down for a minute, then we're gonna come back and see what this looks like. Let's see what we got. These are really so cool. This is working out perfectly, but how do I grab it? It's still kind of hot. Oh, whoa, still hot, still hot. But these are coming out so cool. Some of the stuff on here is pretty fragile, but most of it is Again, but this is really cool. This is working out great. I found out the trick to making really cool looking ones is making them in layers. So you pour some into the flower pot, hit it with electricity, pour some more and fill it with electricity. And I did this a couple times and I ended up getting four or five really awesome ones. I gotta tell you guys, I am super happy with the way this project is turning out. I mean, this is exactly how I envisioned it in my head. Each piece looks super unique, organic, like some kind of coral or petrified lightning. That's awesome. That worked out perfectly. I had another idea. This might have been a bad idea because it involved me separating all the steel BBs with a magnet, which was very time consuming. But I want to try using just the cut silicon bronze wire to see how that works. That was a bad idea because it turns out that didn't work at all. I think what happens is the copper is just too conductive to the heat. So it sucks up all the heat away from the arc and nothing can really heat up enough to melt together. So I just have a bunch of 
hot copper wire in there. All right guys, like I said before, I am super happy with the way that these turned out. And I figured out a good way, some of them are still a little bit weak, but I figured out a good way to make them strong, is just coat them in a little bit of epoxy. And then plus, if you do that, you can add in a little bit of glow-in-the-dark pigment so it really glows in the dark. That's it for this video, guys. See you next time.